This is the 18th lecture for MA 1012 at University College Cork. In this lecture, we'll define the determinant of a square matrix of any size and explain how to calculate it and what it means. We said previously that 2 by 2 matrices had determinants, whatever those are, um, uh, that this thing had associated to it a number, which is this number determinant A is AD minus BC. And this number had a particular property. So if this is a 2 by 2 matrix. Those are numbers, A, B, C, D. This is just a single number associated to that 2 by 2 matrix. We have this single number determinant A. And we know that A is invertible just exactly when uh, the determinant of A is not 0. So it detects invertibility. So that's one property we'd like for a, a determinant to have. We'd like to be able to calculate it, but as I've warned before, it becomes very rapidly hard to calculate for large matrices, typically. Although there are some special matrices for which we will be able to calculate determinants, even for very large matrices, as long as they have some very special form. Now, if we have a larger matrix than 2 by 2, I suppose we, we could also start with a smaller one. If we have a 1 by 1 matrix, that's just a single number, and we can define the determinant of the matrix to just be that number itself. So for 1 by 1s, we know how to do it, and 2 by 2s, we know how to do it. So what about larger matrices? Well, for a larger matrix, we want to define it in terms of smaller ones. And the way to do that is simply to define uh, if A is some n by n matrix. Let's let um, A i j be defined to be um, uh, the same matrix matrix a but with uh, row i and column j deleted removed so i'd take this matrix and i take the row uh, sorry, the column J, row I, and I just cut that out completely and delete it, and cut that out completely and delete it, and take what's left over, the left over bits of the matrix that are, that are still there once you've done that deleting. So in a simple example, if we were to take a matrix A, which is, um, say, 3, 4, minus 1, 0, 2, 1, minus 3, 5, 7, then the matrix A13 would be A with column, with row 1 and column 3 deleted. So row 1 means this guy here has to be deleted. And we have to delete column 3. That's this one here, so that has to be deleted. So we're left over with 0, 2, minus 3, 5. So that's the leftover bits, that's this bit here. So that's how we can delete stuff from a matrix. And this is called um, a, uh, a, a sub-matrix. Um, and we'll say that the, um, but, well, maybe what I want to say, assuming we know how to already to calculate out the determinants of the smaller matrices, we want to calculate the determinant of a bigger one. Uh, we'll say that the i, j, minor, of the matrix A, the definition of IJ minor of a matrix A is uh, simply um, uh, the, de the quantity determinant of AIJ, this matrix with that row and column deleted. Um, and uh, the IJ cofactor of A is. Um, going to be a, so plus or minus times this guy. It's going to be Cij is defined to be minus 1 to the i plus j times the determinant of the Aij, that, that minor. So we take this minor and we take a plus or a minus sign in front of it and that's called the cofactor. Um, now what does this minus 1 to the i plus j actually look like? Uh, that's either a plus 1 or a minus 1. And which is it? How do you decide it's a plus or a minus? Uh, the pattern should be something like this. If uh, we talk about row i and column j, then we get plus, minus, plus, minus, da, 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 minus, plus, minus, plus, a checkerboard pattern of pluses and minuses going on and on like that. Plus, minus, plus, minus, 
minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. So you get this checkerboard pattern in, uh, in the various rows and columns that tell you what the sign should be. So that's the sign that appears here, where I is the row and J is the column. So that pattern, checkerboard pattern matrix tells you how, what signs to put in front to make the cofactor out of the minor. So then, assuming that we have this defined, that we already have, know how to def calculate the determinants of smaller matrices, we'll calculate larger ones in terms of this. Um, so we'll define um, the determinant of a matrix A is simply uh, its entry A11 times its cofactor C11 plus its entry A12 times its cofactor C12 plus dot 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 dot, dot plus A1N C1. And note that it's always a one in front of each per each each of the A's and in front of each of the C's. So C two three never shows up in any of this stuff because uh, it's only C one one, C one two, C two, C one three, and so on. Dot 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 one n. So C one something or other, and A one something or other. So these are only the entries from the first row of A and the cofactors that have a one in the first entry. C one something or other. Those are the only things that show up. The um, notation is frequently used that if A is a matrix, A11, A12, dot, 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 A21, A22, dot, 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 um, then we often write the determinant of A as the same matrix but with um, absolute value type bars on it. I, I've never been very fond of this notation because it gets easily confused with absolute values, but it is often used for calculating determinants. So when we put these bars on, instead of putting square brackets around the matrix or round brackets, if we put straight bars on it, it usually means that what we're talking about isn't actually a matrix. We're talking about the number that is the determinant of this matrix. Um, it's an unfortunate notation, again, because it can get confused with absolute values, but it's... Um, it's a very common notation for determinant of a matrix. So let's see what this looks like if we do a, a calculation of an actual matrix determinant. So let's work out a simple example. What if A is the matrix with the entries 1, 2, 3, 0, minus 1, 7, 6, 5, 4? And these square brackets again tell me that's a matrix, not a determinant. Then what's its determinant? The determinant, which again we write by changing the square brackets to uh, to these vertical bars, but it's not a matrix. It's it's supposed to be a number. I'm supposed to end up with a, computing this out and finding a number. So I write in these matrix entries from A, put them inside the these vertical bars, and that means that I'm computing a determinant of that matrix A. And our definition of determinant is that we're supposed to go across the entries along the top row these ones. Um, so we write those entries down in with a pattern of plus minus plus. So it's going to be plus times the entry there, which is the 1, and then times the determinant of the matrix you get by deleting this row and column. So the determinant of A11. Then it's going to be a minus from the fact that we're going plus minus plus. So there's a minus sign here. Um, so we'll have plus minus, and then let's say plus plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, entries, one, two, three, and then times determinants of what you get by A11, A12, and determinant A13. So that's following our formula for entries from the first row, one, two, three, put in front of them plus signs in the pattern, plus, minus, plus, careful, these, these entries might in some other example actually have other signs as well. There might be pluses and minuses already in the entries. Those also have to be put in there as well. So that could be a source of confusion. Um, but uh, so in front of the entries, one, two, three, we've got the one, two, three here. In front of them we've got plus and minus signs going plus, minus, plus, and so on. Then we have determinants, and then uh, we'll just plug in what those determinants are. So this is one times this determinant. The determinant of the matrix you get by deleting the first row and column from A. Delete the first row, first column, first row, first column. And so you end up with this guy here, minus 1, 7, 5, 4, because we've deleted the first row and first column here, leaving us with these this little 2 by 2 guy here. Minus 2 times determinant, A1, 2. So delete first row, second column leaving 0, 0764 
and um, finally plus 3 times the determinant you get by deleting from A row 1 and column and column 3 row 1 column 3 so that's this bit here 0 minus 1 6 5 so putting that together this we know because we know how to do two by twos directly. It's this times this times that times that. So it's minus one times four minus five times seven minus two times this determinant here is zero times four minus six times seven. And then plus three times this one here plus three of zero times five minus six times minus one. And I'll leave you to compute out the rest of the arithmetic. So you can see the idea though is that the determinant of a 3 by 3 is defined in th in, by three determinants of 2 by 2's and if you went on from there a determinant of a 9 by 9 would be defined in terms of nine determinants of 8 by 8's and so on and so forth. So you can see that very very rapidly the computations become unmanageable. There are a few tricks to try to make the computations easier, but none of them succeed in every case. The, the computation of determinant in principle is horrendously complicated for the, uh, for, for the sort of general matrix of large size. But uh, there are a few tricks that sometimes make some of them easier. A few uh, convenient tricks that we can apply here, um, which are uh, fairly straightforward. The first one is... Uh, is a trick stated in, as a theorem in the notes that um, you could actually expand out along any row or any column. The determinant of a matrix A is in fact given by uh, a, a row I uh, entry uh, in first column, CI1 plus AI2, CI2 plus dot 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 plus AIN, CIN for any. Uh, choice of of number uh, which which well row really i equals one or i equals two or you can pick anything you like so you can pick i to be all up to i equals n that means we're expanding across the entries the entries that here that we're looking at these a's are across uh, row i uh, so they're row i so it's said to be expanding uh, across row i. So instead of taking the entries in the first row, you could take entries from any row you like, but then you have to be careful because you have to correspondingly compute the cofactors from the corresponding uh, uh, with the corresponding number i as well, the appropriate cofactors. Or we can also do a different sum, which is a, uh, a 1j c 1j plus a 2j c 2j plus dot 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 plus a uh, nj c nj for any choice of number uh, j equals 1 or j equals 2 or whatever. Pick one value of j and compute it out. So that's a particular column, uh, column j. So expanding across, I'm uh, sorry, down, expanding down uh, column J. So what we do is we take the entries in the particular column, so we go down the matrix, we take our matrix and we go pick one particular column and we compute down this column, taking the entries that live in that column, that's these little A's here, they all live in the same column J, so uh, down here, and then each of them gets multiplied by a cofactor of the, of the of our matrix, which is given by deleting that row and column and computing out a determinant of a smaller matrix. So that gives us the, the, the uh, expansion uh, uh, like cross rows or down columns. So you can pick any row to expand across or any column, any one row or any one column and compute it out. And that way you get um, you get a, a possibly simpler way to write out the same determinant. We won't prove that this works, but it's, it's a trick which can be useful. So for example, um, if you look at a, one which has a lot of zeros in uh, some particular row or column, Um, so let's write down an, uh, an example that has um, lots of zeros. Well, there's a fair number of zeros here down this column. There's two, but here there are actually three. So the fact that there are three zeros in that column means that's the one I want to work with. I like lots of zeros. Why do I like zeros? Because my formula here 
is a sum of terms, and these are entries from the matrix as I go down that column. So if those entries are all zeros except for just one of them, then it's only that one I have to work with. The rest disappear, and so it becomes much simpler. So the determinant of this matrix A is, if I expand down um, the second column here, um, what I have to do is to write a pattern of, of plus and minuses, and visual pattern plus, minus, plus, minus. There'll be four of them because it's a four by four matrix, so there should be four signs. And then the four entries, zero, three, zero, zero. And then the determinants, A, now this is column two, row one, row two, row three, row four. So row one, column two, this is three times determinant A, uh, row two, column two. 0 times determinant A, uh, column 2, but row 3. And then this last one, determinant A, and it's going to be row 4, column 2. So we've expanded down column 2 by putting the entries from column 2, the pattern of plus, minus, plus, minus, as usual, and then the determinants of the various cofactors, so the various uh, minors uh, th that we get. Um, from deleting the various, um, deleting row one, row two, row three, row four, and always deleting the same column two, the column that we've already used up. We've used up its entries here. So that's the expression for the determinant according to this formula. But since there are zeros, that's the point. They picked a column that had one, two, three zeros in it. That means there's a zero here, here, and here. But that means this term, this term, and this term don't contribute. And so it becomes a much simpler problem. It becomes just minus 3 times the determinant of what you get by deleting this row and column. And so we can now do that um, and delete that row and column. And we're just left with, uh, if we delete, let's say, delete this column. But we also have to delete the row 2. And we're left with these remaining entries. 1, 4, minus 7, minus 1, 6, 8, and 5, 1, 0. And now, at this point, if we wanted to keep going, we'd probably want to pick either this column or this row, because there's a zero there, so there'd be only two entries to worry about. Uh, it would still be, uh, it's, it'd still be a little bit complicated, but it's not too bad. Because there's a zero here, you've still got um, a chance of calculating the thing out without too much trouble. So that's how we can try and make use of having lots of zeros in a matrix. Uh, it can speed up the calculation of the determinant. There are certain matrices for which this kind of pattern uh, works to make the calculation very quick. In fact, you can see the determinant by just by looking at it, more or less. Um, so, uh, for example, if we take a look at um, uh, the determinant of a matrix A, which is 1, 4, minus 2, 9, 7, 15, 271, 88, minus 23, zero, where are we? We want to try and maybe line it up a little better so that you can see what's what. Zero, 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 zero. Uh, and I've still got made a uh, minus four, let's say. Okay, so now we've got a, a matrix that uh, that has the property that it's um, it's strictly upper, it's upper triangular, sorry, not strictly, it's upper, upper triangular. So we've got this upper triangular matrix with all these entries in it. Now, the point is we can expand across, we can expand or expand down this column because it has mostly zeros in it. So it's one. But what is it one times? It's one, and you can forget all the other entries because you're expanding down this column. They're all zeros except that. So it's one times the determinant of what you get by deleting the row and column with the one in it. You delete everything here and here, and so it's one times the determinant of this guy. So you can see what the pattern's doing now. So that means the determinant of this guy, by the same trick of this, this little 3x3 three three corner here, by the same trick, it's going to be take this entry, because that's going to be expanding down a, a column that's mostly zeros. It just has this non-zero entry. So it's that times the determinant of what you get by deleting its row and column. And that's going to give you this guy times what you get by deleting its row and column, and that gives you this guy here. So you can see the determinant is, in fact, uh, just simply the product of the diagonal entries. Determinant A is 1 times 4 times minus 2 times 9, which I can calculate out very quickly. So you can just see what the result is. So 2 9s are 18 minus 18, 
and uh, so it's uh, minus 72, I think. Um, so it's possible to see the determinant there, and then in general, uh, uh, if if a is upper or lower triangular, remember that meant something like could have anything down the diagonal, uh, anything above the zeros below, or the other way around, anything down the diagonal, anything below and zeros above. Um, then uh, the determinant of a is the product of the tri of the diagonal entries. That's just the ones down down here. I have to just multiply them all together, that one or that one. It doesn't work for other matrices that are not uh, lower triangular or upper triangular. Um, and you might think, well, I'll just split it into two, uh, a lower and an upper. But we found that, in fact, sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you have to do some kind of row um, manipulation, some kind of um, permutations of the rows, swaps, to get it to work. But if you could write it as a lower or even as an upper, then you could do it. So it, uh, there are matrices for which the calculation is quick. So some other uh, tricks that enable us to find uh, rapidly defined determinants. Uh, one of them is that um, if A has a row or column of zeros, um, then clearly the determinant A has to be zero because you can expand down any uh, down any column or across any row. So if you had a whole column of zeros, you just expand down that guy and just get zeros all the way. Um, so that's one quick trick. Um, and uh, now you, you could say that um, uh, another trick would be to, to look at what happens when you carry out row operations. If we uh, swap any two rows or swap any two columns. It doesn't make sense to swap a row with a column, um, but you can swap a row with another row or swap a column with another column. We change sign. Um, the determinant changes sign. That's not quite so helpful, but it gives you something. Um, uh, and if we uh, if we scale a row, not a, not a, not the whole matrix, but just a single row by a number. Then you can just look at our formula for expanding across that row, and it doesn't have to be a row; it could be a column instead of a row, a row or a column by a number. We scale um, uh, the determinant of the matrix by that same number, and that's because we expand. Uh, across that row or down that column, we've expanded every term by exactly that number, um, and then deleted that row and column and all the further calculations of all the cofactors. So it never show, the scale factor never shows up again; it only shows up once the first time you do it. So that explains why that works, um, and so it gives us a useful property um, of the determinant. A more sophisticated property, which is quite a bit harder to convince yourself is true is that um, if we add, you can begin to think there were about row operations, uh, a multiple uh, of one row to another different row, uh, we don't change the determinant. And that can be useful to calculate. If you can see some simple row operation, it simplifies the matrix a lot. We don't change the determinant. So it preserves the determinant as it is. So that's powerful because we can use that if we can see some pattern in the rows that, or or the columns instead of the rows, we could use columns uh, since the whole thing is symmetrical in rows and columns. That's fine. So occasionally that works because some rare situation you might actually see some pattern among among the the rows. Um, so you find uh, 4 minus 2 and 8 uh, minus 4. And you can see, well, maybe you could just calculate it by hand, but you can see that this row and this row are double one another. This is the, the first row is uh, doubled, gives the second row. So you can see that if you add a multiple of the first row to the second row, it, uh, minus 2 of this to this, uh, then you can see you get, uh, you get a wipeout of the whole row. 
So you can see, therefore, the determinant, the determinant doesn't change when you do that. We said here, so therefore, the determinant of A must be 0 without having to do any multiplications. So you can see sometimes, and of course, for much larger matrices, occasionally you see that sort of pattern show up, and that makes it possible to calculate out the determinant is 0. A much deeper property that we won't be able to, to get into proving is that the determinant of a product of two square matrices is the product of the determinants of the individual matrices. The determinant uh, preserves multiplication, or is multiplicative. It's not additive. Um, it's not additive at all. Determinant behaves very badly under addition. It's very uh, tricky as to how we could I get even in any estimate of the determinant of the sum from knowing anything about the sums of the determinants, so it doesn't really help us very much. So sums behave very badly, but, but multiplications behave very well. Um, and as we said before, one of the crucial properties of the determinant is the determinant of A is not zero, just exactly when A is invertible. One way to think of that is that um, the determinant A is, an, is a number, which you could think of as a one-by-one one matrix. Uh, so the one by one matrix of determinant A is invertible uh, if and only if the whole matrix A is invertible. And you might think that'd be a nice trick to use to show that something's invertible, but surprisingly rarely useful because um, to calculate the determinant, we've seen that it, what happens to, under the various row operations, it turns out that for, for typical matrices, let's say of large integers or rational numbers, something like this, numbers you can get a precise control over. Um, if you have some huge matrix, the fastest way to find the determinant is usually to carry out the row echelon computations and then watch how they change the, the value of determinant as you go through them, which we've already seen. So, um, so in practice, actually, that's what you'd really do if you had a very large, say, integer matrix, a rational number matrix, or a matrix at least of, of uh, whose, whose entries you know precisely, maybe symbolically. You have some enormous matrix. You carry out some kind of, of manipulations of it into row echelon form through Gaussian elimination, the Gaussian elimination algorithm. And then you can see whether or not it's invertible. Um, but as a consequence, you also can pop out as determinant. Um, so it turns out that's the fast way to go. Uh, unfortunately, finding the determinant is not the fast way to go. But the fact that a determinant exists turns out to be important. Even if it's rarely computable, it's often surprisingly important because it does put a kind of bar on how much computation you have to do. In principle, it tells there is a finite computation that gives the answer. And that's important to know, even if you don't ever make use of the computation itself because it's too horribly complicated. So um, uh, finally, one other property, it's also fairly deep, although it doesn't uh, seem uh, that far off from the way we've defined determinant, really, is that the determinant of A transposes the determinant of A. You can see why it should be true, because basically uh, when you did the, the expansion of the, uh, of, of the, the determinant, you said that you could do it on, uh, either across a row or down a column. So imagine we do this guy across the first row and this guy we do down the first column. Then we're doing exactly step by step the same operation at every, at, at every stage. So the only thing we really have to explain is why is it true that you could expand down any column or across any row and that's rather deep. Um, that's something that we don't want to get into because it's a bit too hard. Um, and finally, we said that determinant is non-zero if and only if the thing's invertible. In fact, um, you can actually say that uh, another uh, more or less obvious fact, almost uh, from the way that we've set the whole thing up and looking at the various steps in the in the row, uh, the, the the Gaussian algorithm, you should be able to convince yourself that this is actually just one over the determinant of a. Um, so it gives us a nice formula for calculating things out. Um, uh, in principle, although in practice, again, we don't really have access to determinants of large matrices. So that covers for us what we need to know about the determinant. It's a lot of material, and, um, and, and you'll need to work through some examples to make sure you know how to calculate it, but you also need to make sure that you have some understanding of why it's useful, what it's useful for doing. It's more or less a, a, a test for determining invertibility. In the next lecture, we'll think about eigenvalues and eigenvectors that measure, in some sense, how a matrix stretches vectors geometrically.